Hello friends! I'm Robert Evans, and this is once again Behind the Bastards, the show where we tell you everything you don't know about the very worst people in all of history. And today we're talking about a man who I truly believe is the worst person of the 21st century. Now, by the end of this episode, you'll either agree with me or you won't, but uh, to join me on this journey, this odyssey, this epic quest, are two of my very favorite people, Jamie Loftus. Hi. And Maggie Mayfish. Hi. Jamie, you are. Whoa. Yeah. You guys, you guys should introduce yourself. You guys, you know that shit Very for you. quiet. That was breathier than I was intending yeah. for the, end, it for was the open. Marvelous. Hi. Yeah. I had to copy it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the ASMR crowd's really going to appreciate that one. I can't mm. maintain sexy baby for what appears will be the length of this episode. <laughs> it's okay. You know what else they're going to appreciate? <laughs> Mm. That was a beautiful what was that noise. Mm. <laughs> wow. A Doritos corn based snack. Well, I better try one myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. From our party size mm-hmm. bag. Mm-hmm. Oh. We've got both Blaze and Nacho Cheese. I have Ugh. never tried Blaze. I'm honestly too weak for Blaze, and oh, I know really? it. Here mm. I go. You know, it's been a while since we talked about Doritos on this show. Mm. And for no reason that I'm willing Ooh. to talk about right now, we're back into them, baby. Ooh. So, Doritos okay. will be accompanying us through this journey into the heart of Markness. Uh, love that moisture sucking dust. Mm-hmm. Ah. It really, it really distracted everyone from my terrible mm. Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, I did going. skip yeah. right over yeah, that. I know, I know. <laughs> into appreciating the. That's chip. the beauty of Doritos. Mm. We can only let two more fly, unfortunately. <laughs> oh you really? really? Blew one right at the top. Even yeah. with Doritos, nature's sin remover. I, I could be one over with additional <laughs> Doritos. <laughs> You're weak, Jamie. Weak. <laughs> that's your forget me now. Yeah, <laughs> that's a Dorito. Dorito. <laughs> The world's forget me now. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> Roofy your shame with Doritos corn based <laughs> snacks. Anyway, no, let's talk about, about Mark Zuckerberg. Talk, yeah, great <laughs> let's transition. Explore all options. Speaking of mm-hmm. marketing bad ideas, uh, Ooh. okay, Mark Zuckerberg. That was your second. Mm-hmm. Y'all ready? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, let's get into it. In the year of our Lord, 2017, I made three trips into the Iraqi city of Mosul. It was, at that point, still partly occupied by ISIS, who the locals just called Daesh. I spent many hours uh, huddled in small rooms with groups of Iraqi federal police and special operations guys. We were all hunkered down, listening for the telltale hum of Daesh's drones, which they used as spotters for their mortar teams. Now, here's the thing about being in a dangerous place like that. After a few hours of tense anxiety, you start to get bored. And the mobile internet in Mosul was actually pretty good, surprisingly good better than it is in Los Angeles sometimes. So, periodically, when I should have been doing literally anything else, I would whip out my phone and check Facebook. I remember one time in particular, I was embedded with a small unit of guys from the Iraqi 9th Federal Police Battalion. Things were exploding about a football field away from us, and I was Facebooking. A bomb went off nearby, and I looked up from my smartphone and realized that everyone in the room, my Kurdish fixers, my wife slash photographer, the six soldiers we were chilling with, all of them were browsing Facebook. 100% of the room was on Facebook. Now, I'm telling you this story because I want to start this week's podcast about Mark Zuckerberg by acknowledging his genius. I'm about to spend about four hours tearing him apart as a human being, but in my opinion, he is undeniably a brilliant man. Anyone who builds something so universally desired and used has a kind of brilliance, and Facebook is objectively brilliant in the same way that, say, heroin is brilliant. So, that's my little intro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I like it. Thank you. Let's get into this shit. Uh, A lot of digital ink has been spilled in the last few years about the sundry negative impacts Facebook has had on our society and world. I want to make it clear off the bat that while this will certainly be a part of the podcast, I tend to view Facebook as a tool and thus more or less morally neutral on its own. Uh, Our goal here is not to attack the social network as a concept or make you feel bad about using it. I haven't deleted my Facebook. It's how I talk to my family. Yeah, that's how I keep an eye on my mom's uh, confusing internet presence. Yeah, yeah, a lot of parents sharing a lot of fake news about Scary things, yeah. My mom likes memes. Oh, oh no. dear! I'm my sorry. mom's a meme head. Oh. You know, when we were all just sharing goatsy around ourselves, I never thought my parents would wind up in that same bag, but with something even grosser. <laughs> my mom started doing this thing where she'll change her profile picture to a llama, and it's some it's some old person joke that I don't understand, and oh. she can't explain it to me. She's yeah. like, "We do it on Facebook," and so I was like, "Why?" Oh. <laughs> Oh, the boomer battalion. (laughs) Okay. So, our goal is not to focus on Facebook, but its founder, 
Mark Zuckerberg, uh, who, as I stated at the top, I come to believe is one of the very worst people alive on this planet. I agree. Yeah. 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 I do agree. He, he's, agree. he's usually depicted as like a robot. Like that's the way mm-hmm. a lot of descriptions of him will take. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that's unfair. I, I think, think it's unfair. Yeah. Uh, I and think... I think it's calculated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And it like mm-hmm. allows him to get away with the shit by being like, no, I'm just awkward mm-hmm. and weird. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah no. I just yeah. don't get your human emotions. <laughs> right. yeah. No, no, Mark no, Zuckerberg. No, 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 no. You get it. You get it. Uh huh. So, Mark Elliott Zuckerberg was born on May 14th, 1984, in White Plains, New York. Uh, for all you astrology heads out there, I crunched some numbers. He's a Taurus, Sun, Scorpio, Moon, Virgo, Ascending. Oh, <gasps> kill, kill him. Will. Wow. Kill him. No, that what you will. Wow. A telling chart, I think. <laughs> a, a telling and powerfully erotic chart. Now, uh, Mark's father, Edward, uh, is a dentist. His mother, Karen, was a psychiatrist, but gave up mm. her career to manage her husband's business and raise their four children, Mark, Randy, Donna, and Ariel. The business was run out of their house in Dobbs Ferry, New York. Elliot Zuckerberg went by Painless Dr. Z, and his motto was, we cater to cowards. Whew. Yeah. It's a good dentist oh, motto, it right? It is. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's, 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 so yeah. far, whatever. It's a little hardcore for me. I don't know if that would be the dentist <laughs> I'd Coward. choose. Cowards? No, I want the <laughs> dentist who fucks me up. <laughs> my, my doctor, my dentist's name as a child was Dr. Vagenis. <laughs> <laughs> And it was still not over it. Vagenis the dentist? You would have Vagenis to say, hi, Dr. Vagenis. Oh, my yeah. God, Vagenis the dentist. <laughs> I mean, he must have never had a choice of what he was going to do in his life. Stay I mean, tuned next week for the surely exciting episode on Dr. Vagenis the dentist. <laughs> Don't know anything else about him, but I'm sure there's an hour of content in there. <laughs> So Mark grew up comfortable, shall we say, Uh, not fuck the world rich, but very well off. Edward was a techie guy, and he trained his son in how to use the basic computer language on an Atari. In 1996, when Mark was 12, his dad mentioned that he wanted a better way for his receptionist to inform him when a new patient had arrived. Mark used his coding knowledge to build a program called ZuckNet. Zucknet. Oh, I was swallowing water during that. Uh, (laughs) This is where it starts. This is where it's a peek into his... View of the world, which yeah. is him. Yeah, him. Yeah, no points for originality on the name. No, no. Zucknet. <laughs> and in, it, j- just as a heads up, I had to type Mark Zuckerberg a lot on this podcast, mm-hmm. and I've come up with a lot of nicknames for him. Ooh. None of them are good. May is we it, rank them? Be... Yes, please. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to yeah. keep a power yeah. ranking yeah. going. These are not clever nicknames. <laughs> I'm just going to state that off the bat. Now, Zucknet has been described as a primitive version of AOL Instant Messenger. The receptionist was able to use it to ping Ed, and members of the Zuckerberg family soon took to messaging each other with it, too. Once the young Mark had his family addicted to the program, he started fucking with them. Here's the New Yorker. Quote, One evening, while Donna was working in her room downstairs, a screen popped up. The computer contained a deadly virus and would blow up in 30 seconds. As the machine counted down, Donna ran up the stairs shouting, Mark! So... Ah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, right now we're still in the zone where I'm like, that mm-hmm. could be a fun. Could prank. be cute. Could, could be, be a fun prank. Could be a cute little mm-hmm. proto yeah. hacker fun. Sure. I mean, not to fast forward, but it seems like he has never grows up. It uh, does seem like he never grows yeah, up. Yeah, a la his uh, cheating on his final exam via yeah. Facebook. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't mm-hmm. blame him for this yet, but given everything else, mm-hmm. it's kind of telling. Guys, mm-hmm. he can't grow a beard. You know, it's no, like there's a lot going on. Yeah, oh, he definitely I've never can. considered that, actually. He's Ugh. even worse at He's growing a, a beard than Ted Cruz. Face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very smooth face. And that's the shame, because after a, a shame like Facebook went through in, with the 2016 election, you would expect him to drop out of public life for a while and then come back with a beard. And launch a new product. Maybe that's what he wanted to do. <laughs> yeah. he but he can't. Like, he's just like, well, you I guess I'll go, yeah. <laughs> I'll go listen to people. With the smooth, droopy face. Uh-huh. He didn't have a beard to wipe his sins away. <laughs> and he didn't know that the delicious taste of nacho cheese Doritos could have done that job for him. Wow. What a shame. Mm-hmm. What a heartbreak. Now, Wee Mark's brilliance was not all the result of autodidactic study. When he was 11, his parents started paying for a computer tutor to help him develop his skills. Computer tutor. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They had computer tutor money in the 90s. So. Pooter tutor. Tutor tutor. Tutor tutor. 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 Good old fashioned pooter tutor. Oh, good old pooter tutor. Uh, this pooter tutor did describe Mark as a prodigy. I'm, I'm sure he was. One of Mark's favorite childhood hobbies was to invite his artist friends over to the house, have them draw things, and then Mark would code video games based on the drawings. Cool. Aww, Neat hobby. Right. A try-hard friend. A try-hard yeah. friend. Yeah. I'm uh-huh. sure those were great parties. Everybody drinking way too much Mountain Dew. Good times. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. For years, I only had a pool to offer for friendship, uh. so I would tell the cool girls, oh, like... You could come swim in my pool, and then they would, and then they would leave. And then they would not <laughs> invite me to anywhere else. No. Yeah. yeah. Oh. 
We should have learned how to code. Oh, damn it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then you'd have been raking in the friends. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Now, being a precocious rich kid, Mark Zuckerberg's parents shelled out the big bucks to get him enrolled at Phillips Exeter Academy for <gasps> high school. Yeah, Whoa. fucking Exeter. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of strong opinions on Exeter. Oh, I'm excited to hear them. For some reference, Exeter currently costs its boarding students somewhere around $46,000 a year. So Mark's yeah. parents spent roughly the annual income of an average American family on their son's high school education. Everyone who goes to Exeter is a certified chode. <laughs> you will not change your opinion of that. I've encountered so many. Now, Exeter, if you want to uh, sponsor the show, why would be my We'll question. take your yeah. chode I mean, We'll money. take your yeah. chode money. But that would Take be very surprising. I mean, they would have to eat Doritos and then they would be changed forever to become good people. So. Yeah, it's like true, in that. You know? Yeah, true. like in a '90s commercial, yeah. where you bite it and then suddenly you're on a skateboard. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what Exeter needs. Now, while Mark was at Exeter, he fell in love with fencing. Uh, I did too, right around the same time. So let's not have any Aww. fencing jokes. Oh, you see how my mouth opened and then it closed. <laughs> I know. I know. You're welcome. Thank you. you. Five ready to go at the, in her <laughs> she mouth. She was. I could. There's, I watched the joke fire back into her <laughs> yeah. brain. Like, yeah. <laughs> Now, Zucky Boy did well in most of his classes, but his strength continued to be programming. At Exeter, he built a program called Synapse, which was essentially a primitive precursor to Pandora. AOL and Microsoft reportedly offered to buy the software from him, and he turned them down. When he wound up in college, one of the stories people told about him is that he was the kid who turned down a million dollars from yeah. Microsoft. Yeah, he's so, like, giving. Wow. And, like, yeah. he, doesn't he doesn't care about ever. the money. He's, it's not about the money. Yeah. The Accidental Billionaires, the book that was the basis mm -hmm. for the social network, makes a Yucky. huge d deal about him turning down the money. Money. Mm -hmm. I Yuck. think it. He's a good yeah. guy. Yeah. I think that title says a lot. The accidental. Whoopsies. The accident. <laughs> I think it's easier to understand. Like Mark's dad was rich as shit. He was paying forty six thousand dollars a year for his kids' college. Mark's never worried about money a day in his life. So why yeah. would he give a big shit about a million dollars? Yeah. Like, yeah. Doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. It's to not him. clout. It's not. His mom doesn't thing. have like diabetes and like can't afford her medication and stuff. Which most kids, you get offered a million dollars, and not because you're greedy. It's like, yeah, that'll change my family's yeah. life. Yeah. <laughs> but this wouldn't make really much of a dent. Yeah. No, so, thank you. He'll, he'll yeah. go to Harvard either way. <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah, yeah he's still. Uh, God, I hate rich people so much. Yeah. <laughs> Realize my, my deepest fear is rich people, and I'm coming to terms with that. It's totally reasonable fear. Uh, yeah. My deepest way more dangerous fear than bears. And my deepest resentment <laughs> yeah. is all rich people. It's not resentment because I don't want to be rich. No. I, I want in myself and my friends to not be scared about our lack of health care. That's yeah. true. I want that, mm. but. I don't want Mark Zuckerberg money. I just don't want anyone else to have Mark Zuckerberg money. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. want anyone to have any money. But he's giving his money away. Um, uh, People will and, point that out. And also, mm. no, he's not. Uh, I have <laughs> several, <laughs> several of my notes dig into uh, the quote-unquote charity, not yeah. charity, Ooh. LLC work. Well, a, a rich person's charity that's not a real <gasps> charity? Stop <gasps> it. Throw the table. <laughs> Guys, he's an accidental billionaire. Cut him a break. <laughs> well, it is uh, very odd to have someone who is creating the housing crisis in San Francisco while also uh, using a fake charity to pretend yeah. to help the resolve problem. It. Resolve yeah. it. I feel like the CEO of Salesforce is the only rich guy in San Francisco who's not full of shit about that and is mm. like, no, we've created a problem. <laughs> like, we should probably pay taxes to fix it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Salesforce. Salesforce. <laughs> if you want to advertise well, I was like, on the wow, show, real Salesforce right. stan over here. I know he's the he's the only billionaire in San Francisco who came out in favor of the tax hike. To wow, like, yeah. so it's, whatever you get a point. I still don't think you should be a billionaire, but no. at least you're not on the wrong side of that issue. Mm -hmm. Now, Mark Zuckerberg graduated from high school and was accepted by Harvard. He joined the Alpha Epsilon Pi fraternity, which is a Jewish fraternity, and met his now wife Priscilla Chan at one of their parties. We started talking at a line to the bathroom. She later recalled to the New Yorker, quote, he was this nerdy guy who was just a little bit out there. I remember he had these beer glasses that said pound include beer dot H. It's a tag for C++. It's like college humor, but with a nerdy computer science appeal. I feel Sophie. Uh, Sophie's having a lot of trouble with that one. So you could just say unfuckable. Yeah. You could say a lot of words. He was unfuckable, but it was clear that he he'd was... be rich. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Priscilla, I, I can read between these lines. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Mark could not because he had those glasses with shit typed oh. on them. <laughs> now, Zuck quickly na made a name for himself at Harvard, and that's what he prefers people to call him, Zuck. Zuck. Is that his preferred yeah, nomenclature? Yeah, that's what his buddies call him. That is a, that is a frat Zuck. name. Mm -hmm. yeah. Harvard frats are 
not even they're not they're boring the accidental billionaires talks a lot about the harvard frats the final clubs and shit mm. i'm not going to get into that much because it, it's just so frustrating to talk mm. about the but, short yeah. story is call me back when you're an mit frat they program their own lit floors and sometimes kill themselves <laughs> doing nitrous cool. oxide very true mm-hmm. pretty cool pretty cool yeah. both ways. Pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh Okay, so uh, he quickly made a name for himself at Harvard. People, of course, talked about the fact that he'd turned down a million dollars. They also <laughs> talked about Course Match, a program he built during the first week of his sophomore year. It allowed students picking classes mm. to see what classes their other classmates had picked. Now, that sounds innocuous, right? You know, mm, yeah, nothing, right, nothing inherently sure. bad about that mm-hmm. idea. But its real purpose was to allow guys to figure out which classes the hot girls were registered in so that they could pick the same classes Feminism, as the hot it's girls. always it's feminism. It's always <laughs> awesome. Why you just... <laughs> I want Mark to know where I am. (laughs) Mark Zuckerberg's life does not pass the Bechdel test. (laughs) 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 Come chase me, (laughs) Zuck. Zucky Zuck. Uh, Mark's next groundbreaking achievement was Face Mash. The Accidental Billionaires describes it as, quote, a website where you compared two pictures of undergraduate girls, voted on which was hotter, then watched as some complex Mm -hmm. algorithms calculated who were the hottest chicks on campus. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good, good, good. Once you're in the Great. top school in the country. <laughs> you really yeah, you, yeah. It's good to know whether you are hot or if you yeah. are. Mm-hmm. Well, it's glad you still get to be, you know, yeah. objectified while. Well, it's it's, it's fair Harvard, level, yeah. not mm-hmm. homely Harvard. Okay? True. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was mm-hmm. a day at Northwestern where they had one of these, like Ooh. two or three days. There was one. Yeah, mm-hmm. there was briefly one at my college as well, yeah. and it was quickly shut down. Yeah. But uh, make no mistake, I tried to figure out what my so, ranking was. I and wasn't. I don't think I was on the site. I did look for myself. I also was, <laughs> and I cried about that. Woo! I was like, I'm not even hot enough to register on the site. Yeah. I don't know if my college had one, but I was not sober enough in freshman and sophomore year to use a computer, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which makes me a tutor. feminist icon. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. would agree. Your life passes the back door. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. You're, you're too drunk to be a misogynist. <laughs> I mean, yeah. hot dog. Are you really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, uh, the pictures on Face Mash came from the Harvard Facebooks. Now, the Harvard Facebooks were databases that each residence hall kept on the students who lived there. Most of these Facebooks were private and only accessible to people in that residence unit. Now, young Mark Zuckerberg mm. kept a blog. And because of that, we actually have a rather deep insight into what he was thinking while he programmed Face Mash. So I'm going to read out young Zuckity Zuck Zuck Zuckaloo Zuck. That was bad. But I'm going to type young Mark Zuckerberg's... Thank you. Yeah, eat one of those shame Doritos. Fantastic. All right, here's Mark Zuckerberg talking about face mash. 9.48 p.m. I'm a little intoxicated, not going to lie. <laughs> so what if it's not even 10 p.m. and it's a Tuesday night? Dork. What? The Kirkland Facebook is open on my computer desktop, and some of these people have pretty horrendous Facebook pics. I almost want to put some of these faces next to pictures of farm animals and have people vote on which is more attractive. 11.09 p.m. Yeah, <laughs> it's on. I'm not exactly sure how the farm animals are going to fit into this whole thing. You can't ever really be sure with farm animals. But I like the idea of comparing two people together. It gives the whole thing a very Turing feel, since people's rating of the pictures will be more implicit a than, Turing say, <laughs> choosing a number to represent each person's hotness like they do on HotOrNot.com. The other thing we're going to need is a lot of pictures. Unfortunately, Harvard doesn't keep a public centralized Facebook, so I'm going to have to get all the, in- uh, the images from the individual houses that people are in. And that means no freshman pictures drat you can like hear him <laughs> petting a cat <laughs> villainously yeah. oh, oh, a, oh, oh god. god yeah it's also funny because the way you read that i think is probably more mm-hmm. attuned to how he was actually his feeling. internal monologue yeah, yeah uh, as opposed to in the film where uh they choose a sort of rain man type <sighs> style yeah, where they were very gently put uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, the, the movie is total bullshit <laughs> but like the yeah the um, it sounds like he took like a swig of uh, off-brand vodka I, I think he was drinking <laughs> oh, shit, I, Mr. I Boston remember. it was some sort of shitty beer it was it was like not good beer oh okay mm-hmm. but not terrible beer it was nicer mm-hmm. than was Budweiser because he's a Gansett? rich kid no it was some weird east coast thing but it wasn't Still yingling loser <laughs> a loser I, I'm not disagreeing with you there but, man I feel yeah. like the only other way that 
Andrew Gaden would be like, also, I came up with this uh, idea called incels. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, I've also founded another type of idea. <laughs> yeah. Just going to seed the world with these ideologies <laughs> crapping up. Now, uh, I do want to note that I don't think the no freshman pictures line is creepy, the way Zuckerberg uses it, because I do think that he is fundamentally the kind of guy who would be bugged by building his creepy wank site off of an incomplete data set. Yeah. yeah. I, would think I, I like, suspect that that's complete. really what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's like, I don't have all the pictures. Mm-hmm. So we are going to get into how Mark Zuckerberg got all of the pictures that he used for his creepy wank site. No. As a hint, he stole them. <gasps> wow. What another theme that but seems to first, pop up. I took him on a sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> but first, oh. Maggie, uh-huh. you a fan of products? <laughs> oh, Robert. <laughs> Jamie, how, how do you feel about services? I live to consume. Oh, Ooh. let's all first consume a delightful Dorito. <laughs> oh my God, that's so good. <laughs> and then let's consume these other fine products and services that have paid us. And we're back. We're back. We just had a quick little Dorito break where we appreciated all of the many bountiful uh, blessings of capitalism. And uh, now we're talking about how Mark Zuckerberg got all of the pictures for his creepy wank site. Now, the very sensible, super reasonable privacy rules Harvard University had established to protect the pictures and data of its students were getting in the way of something Mark Zuckerberg wanted to do. It's in the way! It's in the way! It's something I want! I want to do this! He was left with only one option. (laughs) (laughs) Only one option break into those residence halls, and steal the data. Now, Ben Mesrich, the bad writer of The Accidental Billionaires, Mm -hmm. suspects that that's exactly what Mark did. Uh, In typically overwrought, overwritten fashion, Mesrich envisions Mark sneaking into the residence halls like a teenage horny version of Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible. Mm -hmm. He, he, He admits that this is totally theoretical, but he imagines a couple fucking in the room while Mark is stealing the data, like, and he's hiding from them and stuff. It's super weird. It's like weird fanfic about a (laughs) dorky (laughs) 18-year-old. He was writing it so that the Aaron Sorkin movie would be exciting. Like he was yeah, handing off, yeah. cha- he was literally handing off chapters to Sorkin as he finished mm-hmm. them. Sorkin also a chode. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, it's like when all these people believe in the inherent genius. <laughs> yeah, of, yeah, and you yeah. know, we yeah. should praise. Really, a, really a wild circle jerk taking place. Yeah, here. And, well, yeah. Fincher, yeah, and Fincher, and it's a perfect yeah. storm of people who. Uh, are looking down on others. People who are self mythologized. Yeah, it's it's a lot of people who are really good at one thing and know better than anyone else at ninety nine percent of yes! things, but think they're really good at everything yes! because they're really good at one thing. Oh. It's why engineers make up most terrorists. <laughs> wow. Yep. Yeah. Whew. That's true. Look it yeah. up. I yep. do want to say my biggest takeaway is that Zuckerberg is smart at one thing yeah. and is incredibly stupid at everything else. Like every other person. Every other person. On every this other face person on the planet. But like your plumber doesn't get on airs about his ability to fix a smartwatch or launch a social network. Right. He knows, no, I'm fine at everything else. I'm really good at plumbing. That's yeah. great. That's how the world works. They don't try to run for president. Yeah, I'm good at this job. I would be terrible at fighting fires. <laughs> for some reason, I'm looking at Mark Zuckerberg merch right now. Just to <laughs> see. I was like, uh, I want to get a shirt with him. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna get a, we'll come up with a shirt idea during this podcast. <laughs> okay. I, I do have in the shirt we're coming out with, Hindenburg the oligarchy. Oh, okay. He's going to be one of the guys on the flaming Hindenburg. Hot so, plug. Right. Hashtag Hindenburg the oligarchy, everybody. They all died on blimps. We wouldn't have these problems. Very mm. true. So I did not find the accidental billionaires to be an enjoyable read, but I have to say I think a lot of what Mesrich posits, uh, including most of this, is quite plausible. I doubt anyone was fucking in the room, but the idea that Mark was basically breaking into these residence mm-hmm. halls to steal pictures. He got the picture somehow. That seems plausible. Yeah. Now. I broke into a residence hall and stole uh, several air conditioners. So oh, it's not that hard. You really. can't just drop that and <laughs> yeah. not get into Did you need the air conditioners yourself or uh, were you fencing them for dope? To me, I felt like I needed it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I was really hot. <laughs> yeah, the I ironically broke into a bunch of Boston campuses that weren't mine my freshman year of high school because I was hired for the street team of the social network. <gasps> so I wow. snuck onto wow. Harvard grounds to put up posters to be like, heard of this movie? Heard of this Shut movie? To make like $20. Wow. wow. Yeah. That is a deep connection. That is a really deep material. connection. I still have a mouse oh. pad. Fantastic. Oh, well, you have Z- you have Zuck merch. You have yeah. Zuck merch. I just want more. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, however he did it, Mark managed to steal all the pictures he needed to build his stupid Hot or Not clone. Here's what he wrote on his blog before taking it live. Perhaps Harvard will squelch it for legal reasons without realizing its value as a venture that could possibly be expanded to other schools, maybe even ones with good-looking people. But one thing (gasps) is certain, and it's that I'm a jerk for making this site. 
Oh, well, someone had to do it eventually. Were we let in for our looks? No. <laughs> Will we be judged on them? Yes. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Ah, Motherfucker. Wow. Right. During this, he realizes that he is not a catch. Yes. <laughs> I, I will say, in fairness, I don't think Mark Zuckerberg ever had illusions about that. <laughs> yeah. He didn't even need to feel like he had to write it down at any point. Yeah. yeah. Like, That's a given. He's like, uh, well, it goes without saying. I really got to become a billionaire. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's urgent. Zuckerberg launched the program and gave the URL to a handful of friends and some kids he wanted to impress. According to Mesrich, Face Mash went viral without Zuck really intending for that to happen. In the first two hours, the site logged 22,000 votes. Now, that was only by like 400 some odd students, so everyone on Harvard sounds kind of gross. <laughs> In fairness, like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mark shut it down as soon as he realized it had gotten way, way more popular than he'd intended, but the damage was done. He was hauled in front of Harvard's deans to explain himself. He admitted he'd done a bad thing, but argued that he'd also helped expose security flaws in Harvard systems, and he offered to help fix those flaws. Mm-hmm. This, that's the rock star moment that in the, the film. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <sighs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. That, that, that's how Mesrich presents it. Uh-huh. Uh, he, he also states that uh, Mark's social awkwardness and his confusion was his greatest defense, uh-huh. that the, the deans had realized he wasn't really a bad narrative. kid. Yeah, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read a little selection from that. He's just awkward. Yeah, don't you feel bad for him? He's just actually wants to have sex with him. Yeah, actually, that's uh, Rashida Jones's. The purpose of her character in the screenplay is to make sure that we still like him. I mean. Guy. Right, because she just like Rashida Jones, like uh-huh. asterisk looks at Jesse Eisenberg <laughs> sympathetically, yeah, and, and that like don 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 music plays in the background like, every time. Me, I think I actually found a Mark Zuckerberg shirt that I want. So I'm going to read the, a clip from that chunk of Accidental Billionaires that describes that scene you guys Great. were just going over because I think it's actually grosser. Oh. The gathered deans had looked at him and listened to his stilted affectation, and they had realized that Mark wasn't really a bad kid. He just didn't think the same way other kids did. He hadn't realized that girls were going to get mad because guys were voting on their appearance. Hell, Mark and Eduardo, and probably every other college guy in the world, had been ranking female classmates in terms of hotness since the dawn of structured education. Eduardo was pretty sure that someday, some paleontologist would find a cave drawing ranking Neanderthal girls. It was simply human nature. No, it's not. That's oh. no, it's no, it's not. Maggie, Treating f- people like a rotten tomato score is not inherent human nature. <laughs> well, what was the first time you remember being like rated by someone in uh, school? Mine was middle fourth school. grade. Yeah, middle yeah. school. I remember there was a large period of my life where I was not hot, and then like when I became okay looking was when someone stuck a sticker on my butt. You're <gasps> yeah, no, oh, wow. oh, yeah. It was a spicy sticker from the spicy sandwiches at lunch. Oh my god, and that was my That's first so- like. <gasps> Someone finds me attractive. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this oh someone had to just <laughs> stick a chicken sticker on your butt. Yeah. I remember there was like a hard copy circulating in my fourth grade oh, class and mm-hmm. it would change throughout the years. So there was like an eraser marks. It is a real thing that people will always do oh, forever, yeah. but uh, yeah. empowering it in any way and right. making well, it easier to do. I don't know that people will always do it forever. I think that boys, because I can tell you, I did it as like a teenage boy and sure. I did it because mm-hmm. I grew up with media that did it too, with like mm-hmm. magazines. Yeah, and so that, like, very true. Pe- like mm-hmm. I didn't just come up with in my head like, oh, what if we ranked girls on a 10 point system? Like I saw that and read that and yeah. shit on the mm-hmm. internet and then I I did it. Uh, Face Mash was something of a disaster on the surface, but it earned Mark the attention of the Winklevoss twins, uh, two young rich kids who liked rowing boats and had come up with the brilliant idea of creating an app called the Harvard Connection. I think the Winklevoss twins are cute. They are objectively cute. They're cute. They're objectively good looking guys. And I used to try to play a character that was the third Winklevoss. He was like their spare tire. His name was Trip. 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 Yeah, it would be Trip. It's Trip. He had sex with the car. (laughs) (laughs) I refuse to believe that both Winklevoss twins have not also had sex with cars. They have enough money they could have bought Kit from Knight Rider. That's Uh, true. The Bitcoin brothers. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) They're hot. They're hot. They're hot. And they row. No wonder Mark hated them. Yeah. Well, they're yeah. hot. It's the revenge of the nerds, uh, you know, story. Yeah. And so there a needs con- to classic be- feminist yeah. text. <laughs> it's a classic feminist text, revenge of the nerds. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, there was another movie I liked as a teenage boy and then mm-hmm. watched as an adult and was like, is that, that's rape. There is rape. Yeah. That's yeah. for sure rape. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. for sure. Fun film. Yeah. Now, um, the idea of the Harvard Connection, the site the Winkle Bosses wanted to make, was basically a site where, uh, 
they wanted a site where cool guys in college could meet girls without having to meet them in person. There was something called the fuck bus that would ferry girls from other colleges to Harvard. That's what they called it, the fuck bus. Oh, but they blast. thought that was inefficient and wasted time, and they wanted a faster way to meet people to fuck. And that was the idea behind the Harvard connection. Oh, now, sick. the Winklevosses couldn't actually code. They were just rich guys with an idea for a fuck site. Mark Zuckerberg came into the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, language. <laughs> what else do you call it? <laughs> it's a fuck site. And I got nothing wrong so with a funny. fuck site if it's, uh, just like, it's ain't an egalitarian. Wrong with yeah. fuck site. Ain't another, like Tinder. Tinder was just created so that everybody could fuck. But a site just so that rich guys can meet girls to fuck, that's gross. Yeah. yeah. A site for everyone to fuck, whatever. Fair. I got another I mean, wrong. it's yeah. true because it's like, it's like a selected few yeah. getting a certain like resource yeah the, the specific idea that like oh, we're just so busy rowing boats yeah. and going to school what if we had a fuck site if a man can row a boat he can i'm not gonna finish that i threw uh, a bottle at a harvard <laughs> rower once from the bridge in my defense i, I was drunk at 8 a.m <laughs> know how proud I am of you, <laughs> knowing that. They look so stupid. But it's super proud. It made me mad. <laughs> so the Winklevosses didn't actually know how to code, uh, which is where Mark Zuckerberg came into the picture. He initially agreed to help them with the project, and for a while he emailed back and forth with them, but as time went on, it slowly became clear that Mark had no intention of actually working on their project. He was just stringing the Winklevoss twins along while he worked on his own project, titled the Facebook. Savage. Now, mm -hmm. uh, the Facebook was, minus a few features, the social network we all know and grudgingly accept the existence of today. <laughs> Mark did not start it on his own. Uh, at the very beginning, the ground floor level, he worked with a dude named Eduardo Savarin. Now, Savarin mm -hmm. was a fellow Harvard student and one of Young Zuck's few good friends at the school. He came from a rich family and had made like $300,000 the year before with a series of clever investments. Mm -hmm. Mark needed Eduardo's cash to get his idea for the Facebook off the ground. The original agreement was that Eduardo would be the Facebook's business manager while Mark would handle the coding. Eduardo put in the first $1,000 necessary to get Facebook off the ground by servers and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. With the money taken care of for now, Mark Zuckerberg was free to build the website of his dreams. And while the Facebook of today looks a lot different from the fuck-focused Harvard Connection website the Winklevoss twins thought Mark was building for them, the original design for the Facebook had an awful lot in common with that idea. Here's how the accidental billionaires describes the initial layout of the site. There was a picture near the top, whatever picture you wanted to add, then a list of attributes on the right side, year you were in college, your major, your high school, where you came from, clubs you were a member of, a favorite quote, and then a list of friends, people you could add yourself or invite to join, a poke application that allowed you to poke other people's profiles, so letting them know you were checking them out, and in big letters, your sex, what you were looking for, your relationship status, and what you were interested in. So... While Mark's vision was seemingly more complete than the Winklevoss's idea for Harvard Connection, it came down to the same basic goal, getting people, namely Mark Zuckerberg, laid. Quote, Sick. the thing yeah. that would drive this social network was the same thing that drove life at college, sex. The Accidental yeah. Billionaires is a fun book, yeah. Wow. So, but I don't think he's wrong about that. I think he's, okay. I think he's, he's nailing what these kids yeah. were going for. They wanted mm. a fuck site. Congrats to everyone who has sex in college. Yeah, I keep Good thinking, like, what, well, like, I, I, like, I guess, like, naive is the wrong word, but I, like, really didn't think about sex at all until much later in my life. I was, like, I'd be engaged to I be married in the military <laughs> in college. I was chilling. Mm -mm. Huh. No, I don't think I that. I regret. It, yeah. <laughs> so, so many things I could have done. No one I knew was fucking. Yeah. Me, yeah, me either, really, I guess. Man. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Robert's like, can't relate. <laughs> can't well, really it's it's impossible to be an 18 to 20 year old, year old male and not be thinking about that yeah. way too much. Fair. Like, not that our the focus of our media doesn't make it worse, but yeah. like, you know, your hormones as a man, like that's when things are going fucking wild. People so, be horny. Uh, people be horny. I love yeah. my virginity to a woman, actually, now that I think Congratulations. about it chronologically. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Hell yeah. <laughs> now. I could go on for a while about the juvenile nature of Facebook and his founding. They chose to hire their first wave of coders based on the results of a drinking contest, but I feel like that would be counterproductive. Y'all get the point. Mark Zuckerberg was a gross young adult when he first started his social network. <laughs> it has gross DNA. But none of us are at our best when we're college sophomores. I hope most of you didn't do anything as nasty as steal thousands of people's data so you could rate girls based on whether or not they were hotter than literal cows, but we all do shit that we aren't proud of at that age. I would not be declaring Mark a bastard purely on the fact that he was a sick, horny nerd in college. When I was 18, I drank 
drank so much that I vomited on three separate strangers at the same party. Whoa! Three separate occasions. When I was 19, <laughs> my friends and I cool. brewed up 30 gallons of trash cider and got a crowd of strangers so drunk that one person vomited off the fourth story balcony of the Dallas Sheraton onto a restaurant full of people. My friends and I gleefully heckled the patrons as they ran for cover. There were umbrellas <laughs> on the tables. And I remember my friend shouting, those umbrellas won't save you! <laughs> vomit rain from the sky. <laughs> So, let it never be said that Behind the Bastards is a show that judges people just for doing dumb yeah. shit when they were young. Mm -hmm. I was a shitty young person, too. Uh -huh. It's okay. Test your boundaries. That's, Test your yeah. boundaries. Yes. It's, it's fine if you were. And if Mark Zuckerberg mm -hmm. had changed as a human being after this, I would not be judging him mm -hmm. based on the fact that he wanted to make a fuck site when he was 19. Yeah. That's know? really what is so disappointing, is that yeah. like it comes from such a normal place. Like, <laughs> totally yeah. normal. His, it's pretty normal. It's pretty like mundane. It's yeah. pretty commonplace. Um, and given the context of the time it's in like none of this was like shockingly misogynistic no, or no. anything it like that. It was kind of like we are not woke culture. He's yeah. not worse yeah. and, and, and he's not like there were like, like there were definitely kids in fucking Harvard and stuff who were you know date raping people. Mark Zuckerberg mm -hmm. wasn't doing that. Right. I've never heard any accusations of anything like that. Like he was just a normal background noise level misogynistic mm -hmm. for the time. Horny you know? hacker. Horny, Horny hacker. hacker. Yeah. Horny hacker. Mm -hmm. So let's get on to why He's really a bastard. I'm going to brush over most of the founding of Facebook and the sundry drunken parties that the accidental billionaires makes a big deal about. The Winklevosses um, are hot, et cetera. Et super et cetera, hot. Et cetera. Love them. Yeah. Abs um, like a goddamn cheese grater. Both of them. Um, yeah. The short part of it is Mark and Eduardo met a guy named Sean Parker, the Napster founder. Justin Timberlake? No, uh, kind of looks like him though. Yeah, Justin uh, Timberlake. At that point, oh right, in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean Timber. <laughs> I mean, Justin Timberlake, like, you know. He's a good man to have play Sean Parker. They kind of look. He alike. did great. They're, the well, moment. Yeah. Oh, what's that famous horrible line that he says? Like, what about a million dollars? What about a billion dollars? <gasps> oh yeah. Dollars? You know what's better than a million dollars? A billion. And then he like, <laughs> like fade out. Yeah, he dis like. he just disappears into the wind. Yeah. Now, at that point, Sean Parker did not have much money, but he was an experienced tech entrepreneur and had solid connections in the industry. It seems like he kind of helped convince Mark to move out to California with a couple other Harvard students to work on the Facebook during the summer. Mm. Over this time, it had spread from Harvard's campus to colleges across the nation. Mark and his first employees wound up letting Sean Parker crash on their couch. The Facebook continued to grow, and Mark made the decision to drop out of school and stay in California, a choice I endorse for 100% of Harvard students. The Facebook wound up securing a bunch <laughs> of VC out. money. Yeah, get out. Yeah. Get out get of that out. fucking school. <laughs> yeah. Same with Stanford. Mm -hmm. Go to New York, I guess. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't care. The Facebook wound up securing a bunch of VC money from Peter Thiel under the requirement that it drop the V and just go by Facebook. This was apparently Sean Parker's suggestion, and damned if it wasn't a good one. No one said he was bad at branding. Bad at having weddings, because he had a $30 million wedding that destroyed a forest. But wow. Yeah, he, he, had, he had a Lord of the Rings-themed wedding, and he no! didn't get permits and had to pay $10 million in fines. He, like, Woo! used bulldozers in places that you're not supposed to... Nerd culture oh. is toxic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You want to do your fucking Lord of the Rings wedding up to destroy a forest for it. Hire well, someone to... He was playing the, the point. point. Yeah. yeah. Well, he wanted to be Sara. He saw he saw that as a... He, he made uh, Mordor. Yeah, yeah. He <laughs> like the point. Yeah. You didn't really get the message it was uh, <laughs> trying to convey. A whole bunch of little Saurons. <laughs> fucking... J.R.R. Tolkien would have been pissed at him for having a bulldozer. Not a big fan of industrial construction equipment mm. here. Read the guy much. Um, also an anarchist, mm -hmm. but kind of a weird anarchist, but yeah, self declared. Interesting. Yeah, I yeah. That. He was a weird type of anarchist. A lot of stuff about the Catholic Church or whatever, but mm. anyway. Weird. Yeah. Chode anarchy. No, I mean, he was like, he, he has a good quote, which was like, uh, I don't think people should be in charge of other people. Less than one in a million is capable of doing the job. Which is mm. you know, I, I wow. agree I with. I think yeah. I really agree with that. <laughs> yeah. You live through World War One, you don't wind <laughs> up a big fan of hierarchy. <laughs> <laughs> Now, well, Mark and the Facebook's first few employees were living in Palo Alto. They were being bankrolled by Eduardo Severin. He had put roughly $20,000 into the company to get it off the ground. He was also working while well in New York trying to sell to advertisers and stuff, mm -hmm. putting in his time and also the only person putting money on the line. So he's really believed in this project, really being a good friend. But his relationship with Mark got rocky. 
The accidental billionaires and the social network make it look like Sean Parker got his hooks into Mark and he and Zuckerberg started taking meetings He's with innocent. investors. He just had a bad friend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Influenced him, you yeah. know. Zuck innocent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They, they were meeting without Eduardo's knowledge and Eduardo reacted by cutting off Facebook's access to his money because he thought he was getting edged out of the company, which is exactly what was happening. Mm-hmm. Um, but Such Eduardo, a diabolical teen. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. know. Pretty gross. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, that's what prompted them to make a deal with Peter Thiel. Since Eduardo was contracted to own 30% of Facebook, they couldn't cut him out entirely, but it seems like their lawyers engaged in some complicated legal fuckery. We will be talking about that legal fuckery and the other people that Mark Zuckerberg fucked over who are not mentioned in the social network because he stole from somebody else, too. (laughs) But first, you know what doesn't steal from anyone? What, What? Robert? The wonderful advertisers who support our program and or show with their products and or services. You're right. And... We're also supported. Ah, Maggie, you beat me to that delightful, Mm. satisfying crunch. How's those blazes doing? Oh, man, I am a convert. Does it it warm up a cold winter day? Sure, I like (laughs) it. I like the tingle. It's like a heater for your insides. Mm -hmm. That's a free one, Doritos people. Don't use that. Products! (laughs) And we're back. Oof. Oof. That's, that's exactly what I always say after a solid product and or service. Now, uh, we were talking about uh, what Mark Zuckerberg did to Eduardo Savarin, the good friend who invested $20,000 in his buddy's idea and also worked full time pretty much to try to make it a reality, mm-hmm. which is great friending. You'd think yeah. that would build up some loyalty. Eduardo sounds like a really good friend. Eduardo sounds like a real one. Yeah. Let's yeah. talk about how he got maybe nice. I fucked he over. He was hot in the movie, right? Yeah. He's the yeah, guy who does not come across as a douche science. in the story. Yeah. I don't know anything about him. Maybe he kills yeah. chickens or something, but maybe chickens need to be killed. I hope he got in on Bitcoin, too. Mm. I think he's rich anyway, so <laughs> it probably doesn't matter. I just looked him up afterwards. Now, uh, Mark pretended to make nice with Eduardo, and so Eduardo signed a contract that made it look like he was getting actually 34% of the company. But this was just a bunch of complicated legal bullshit, um, and the company was allowed, based on the sort of terms of the contract, to actually dilute Eduardo's shares to weigh less than 30% more like 10%. Savarin maintains he was cheated out of his fair stake of the company. When Mark and Sean Parker edged Savarin out, they also cut his name out of Facebook lore. It's not all that different from the stuff you'll hear about in Stalinist Russia. He was basically deleted from the company history. Now, when the social network came out, Zuckerberg attacked it for being inaccurate, but in the years since, the emails he sent to his lawyer around this time have come out. At one point, he asked, quote, is there any way to do this without making it painfully apparent that he's being diluted to 10%? talking about Eduardo, (laughs) to which his lawyer responded, Uh, the broad categories of legal risk are A, fiduciary duty, as Eduardo is the only shareholder being diluted by Mm. the grants. Again, as Eduardo is the only shareholder Mm -hmm. being diluted by the grants issuances, there is a substantial risk that he may claim the issuances, especially the ones to Dustin and Mark, but also to Sean, are a breach of fiduciary duty later on, if not now. According to Business Insider, this is exactly what happened. Quote, Saverin eventually sued Facebook over breach of fiduciary duty. Facebook and Saverin settled, and he walked away with 4% to 5% of the company. That stake is now worth close to $5 billion. So again, mm-hmm. he's doing all right. Yeah. You don't got to feel he's that sorry okay. for Eduardo. But what yeah. Mark does is slimy here. Yeah. Now, while the exact terms of the settlement are unclear, Facebook was also forced to reinstate Saverin's name in the company history. Mark also eventually settled with the Winklevosses and their partner in the Harvard Connection, a guy named Narendra. They reportedly got $65 million. While Facebook's legal team were working on that case, they searched Mark's computer and came across the IMs he sent at the time. These IMs paint a very fun and very ugly picture of the man previously described as just robotic. Wait, do we know uh, what his green name was? I don't. Oh, I think Zuck. That it says, really it says Zuck in the yeah. typing. Zuck. Oh, maybe he got All right. Okay, okay. So it may just have been Zuck. Huh. Here is one excerpt from a conversation between Mark and a friend talking about his real plans to work on the Winklevoss's social network. This is when he was still telling the Winklevosses he was working on it. Friend, so have you decided what you're going to do about the websites? Suck. Yeah, I'm going to fuck them. Probably in the year. <laughs> but he then, he then corrects probably in the year to ear. Ear. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, look at Suck that. Suck, you scam. Yeah, the ear. 
Fuck you, freaking <laughs> scam. Yeah, I can see why they won that suit. <laughs> or settled. Yeah. yeah. Information that's turned up in the years since has also shown that Eduardo Saverin was not the only friend who invested in Mark's website and got fucked over. Mm-hmm. Paul Siglia seems to have invested $2,000 into Facebook in exchange for some stake in the finished project. Now, at some point, Mark Zuckerberg clearly realized that his baby was going to be valuable. He started lying to Siglia, claiming that the project was basically dead in the water so that he could pay the friend back his $2,000 and cut out his interest in the business. Here's one email he sent to Siglia in 2004 while he was in California working to make Facebook. Paul. I'm guessing that you don't want to talk to me, but I wanted to say happy birthday and that I hope to resolve our differences. I see that what I did was wrong, and I'm really sorry that I behaved as I did. Please give me your address, and I will mail you back the $2,000 for your trouble. More if it will repair our business relationship. Another summer is here, and I still don't have any time to build our site. I understand that I promised I would, but other things have come up, and I'm out in California working during break. I just don't want the obligation of having to answer you for not following through, and I won't be able to. The first half of that email sounds like what my cousin texts everyone every time he gets out of jail. <laughs> like, yeah. Hoping I can repair these relationships, regretting my mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, One month later, uh, hi, again, regretting same mistakes. <laughs> same really regretting those same yeah. mistakes. Sick cycles are a bitch, yeah. aren't yeah. they? <laughs> and hey, in some fairness, I never got over the mistakes that I made at 19 because like six months ago I was drunk in Santa Monica and I started Brag. stealing light bulbs from the outside of bars and throwing them at my <laughs> oh, friend's feet. You taught yourself You're away. Still doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, still doing that. I haven't grown up yeah, either. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't have billions of lives in the balance mm, either. Mm-hmm. I, I am purchasing the Zuckerberg shirt. Just <laughs> You should. Why don't you read the front of that Zuckerberg shirt? Oh, it's pretty it's great. a good Jamie Zuckerberg Loftus. shirt. It's uh-huh. a picture of Zucky uh, programming uh, as a Harvard student. He's got a water bottle, a wine glass, and a Red Bull. <laughs> and the quote below reads, quote, you can be unethical and still be legal. That's the way I live my life. Ha ha. Ha ha. Oh, Peak. beautiful. Uh-huh. Now, It gets uglier. See, the problem with being a tech-obsessed young person who fucks over countless people to start Mm -hmm. your business is that a lot of the conversations that prove you to be a gross weirdo are going to come out. Here's one Mark had with a friend after he launched Facebook in his dorm room and 80% of his classmates were using the service. Zuck. Yeah, so if you ever need any info about anyone at Harvard, just ask. I have over 4,000 emails, pictures, addresses, SMS, redacted friend's name. What? How did you manage that one? (laughs) Zuck. People just submitted it. I don't know why they, quotation marks, trust me. Ha ha. <gasps> Dumb fucks. <laughs> that is, you I, that's really the core of it. Yeah, there's a scene in The Social Network where Z- Zuckerberg meets um, two fans mm-hmm. and they make like idiots of themselves. They like fall over each other. And the point of that scene is, aren't the people who look up to you stupid and dumb? Mm-hmm. And that's what I think Fincher is very effective at communicating with his films. Yeah. Uh, right. And uh, While Sorkin still well. lionizing the main character yeah. as yeah. like, uh, yeah, the, his customers are idiots and uh-huh. let's make fun of them. Yeah, they're farm animals. Yeah. They're the farm animals. A big old, they, say, they do the same thing in Vice, which bothered me. Oh, Anyways. Yeah. Oh, I have very strong opinions about Vice. But, it made me mad. Oh, it made me mad, but I thought it, did a good job of talking about how execrable of a human he is. Why would anyone make Dick Cheney look remotely cool right now? Oh, I didn't make him look... I, I, mm. I don't know. Maybe it's because I've been there and I've seen the consequences of it. I didn't think he looked cool, but I, I thought it... I think to an everyday consumer, he could seem cool. Yeah. That's the... That's the fun. You know yeah. a lot about Cheney, whereas... It's a little bipartisan. Yeah, yeah, you know, that. that's a good worry to have. It's mm-hmm. like... Um, I was reading an interview with the, the guy who created The Punisher, Talking about like who's being told that like police officers are putting it on his car and he's furious. He's like, no, he's not a pro cop character. He's making the point that our justice system is so fucked that a lunatic with a gun is murdering strangers in the street. They're like, that's not good. Like, awesome, right? (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. that's what we are doing as cops. So culture is devoid of nuance. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like, it's very frustrating. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the shirt's on the way. <laughs> fantastic. Yes. Facebook received its one millionth registered user on December 30th, 2004. It spread to high school students in September of 2005 and introduced the ability to tag people in December of 2005. In September 2006, the service was finally open to everyone anywhere in the world. The stage was finally set for Facebook's blisteringly rapid growth to the world's <gasps> single most dominant media organization. <sighs> During this time, Mark Zuckerberg grew wealthier and ever more influential but he didn't grow out of being a tremendous douchebag. In fact, as we'll cover in part two, the wild success of Facebook turned Mark from a kind of slimy nerd bro into something much, much darker. 
Uh, uh, Jamie Loftus. Oh, yeah. Plug your pluggables. Oh, uh, well, you can uh, find me online wearing my new Zuck shirt. Uh, Ooh, I can't at, wait. Uh, Jamie Loftus Help and on Instagram at Jamie Cry Superstar. And they call to the it the Graham. Cast. They call it the Graham. I, I'm sorry. Gram. Uh, famous Zuck entity. <laughs> that, <laughs> if you want to support me uh, and Zuck, I'm going to be posting a picture of my ironic Mark Zuckerberg t-shirt on Mark Zuckerberg's platform any day now. Fantastic. So, I'm really like... I'm really telling him. I'm really you know? sucking excited. He'll really get the message, him. I think, mm-hmm. this time. Yeah, I'm going to show time. him. Uh-huh. From inside his diamond bathtub filled with <laughs> crystal. <you know>? Uh, <laughs> fucking coward. <laughs> Please follow me online. <laughs> I'm a coward. Maggie Mae Fish. Pluggables. Plug. Yes, uh, you can find me on Twitter at that name, uh, Mays with an E, because of my dead great-grandmother. Yeah. Um, Woo. Yeah. Woo. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can find me on YouTube at that same name, and and yeah, I have a podcast about friendship, which you can find on my uh, Twitter. Okay. Fantastic. Oh. I'm Robert Evans. You can find me on Twitter at I Write Okay. I have a book called A Brief History of Vice where I injure my friends with dangerous ancient drugs. Oh, that's not your um, review of the movie Vice? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. I am kind of frustrated that I'm stealing my name, which no one had ever used outside of my book. No. Until, uh, it's mm-hmm. a really unique title. It's a doggy dog world. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, uh, you can find this podcast online at BehindTheBastards.com, where all of the sources, many, many sources for this podcast will be uh, available. You can find us on Instagram, the Gram, and uh, Twitter at, at @bastardspod. And you can buy a t-shirt from Tee Public. You Woo. can get hoodies. You can get drinks. You can get stickers. You can get uh, a Lottie 20 millimeter cannon branded with a uh, lot behind the bastards content if you need what? to knock out moderately armored vehicles. Yeah. I do. They, I, I, who Thank doesn't? You. Thank you. you. We all, do. We wow. all need to shoot through police bear cats every now and then. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and, and the T Public Lottie 20 millimeter anti tank gun can help you do that. So, Brave T Public. Let's go shopping. Great Brave site. <laughs> Let's go shopping and come back for part two Mark Zuckerberg. The worst man of the 21st century. 